So after a wheeling trip at Anthracite, back here in the shop, I noticed I have a rather large puddle underneath my rear diff. I've been worried about this for a while. I know I beat the crap out of it on the rocks, but it looks like I finally made a hole right around here in the bottom. Finally wore it through. I've been wanting to shave this nine inch for quite some time, so it looks like uh, now's the time. take about an inch off of the lowest point on this housing at least for starters i want to get it marked at an inch off so we're going to measure while everything's on its own weight so everything is at the appropriate pinion angle it looks like we're right about 12 inches from the ground to the bottom of the diff so i'm going to build a contraption probably just out of a piece of two by four at 13 inches so i can then just scribe a line around the housing that's parallel with the floor to at least get me a starting point. So in my ultra super scientific method here, I've cut off a length two by four that's 13 inches. And I'm just going to use the top edge of it to, uh, to mark a line all the way around the housing. Hard to do while holding the camera, but you get the idea. I'll come back in a minute. Okay, so you can see my nice square line. It's actually working pretty nice, but once I work around the side here, I'm actually starting to think an inch is a little too much. It's going to actually run into the ring or the uh, mounting point of the third member a little bit. So I think I want to take that. I'm actually going the an inch plus, you know, the diameter of my pencil. So I'm going an inch and almost an inch and a quarter. So I think I'm going to take about another half inch off my two by four and rescribe this line. All right, I think this looks a little more reasonable. We're gonna miss the mounting flange there by a little bit. So I like that. Um, about a half inch lower than we were. It's still going to give me about three quarters of an inch of shave on the bottom, which which is pretty good. I mean, a nine inch is a smaller housing anyway. So that's still gonna give me almost 13 inches of clearance under the diff, which is pretty darn good. exactly what that is sticking down okay that's just part of this next layer of steel is all Let's see if we can get the camera in here a little closer and show you what's going on here Yes, I know I still have my gears and all that in there. We're going to pull all that out. Probably should have done it first, but it's all going to get clean before it goes back in, so we'll be okay. As you can see, this extra lip here, which I believe is part of this stamping, this part of the housing is a separate piece, so we'll have to cut this chunk off as well. But you can see there's still plenty of clearance up to the gears. Maybe you can see... So we probably could take a little bit more off, probably at least another. We probably could have kept that original line, but it would have been close. But I don't need it to be real tight. I want to make sure I have room for fluid movement. So we're going to stick with what we have. We're just going to cut this other lip off and then uh, figure out what kind of plate we need to weld in there. So we're going to go ahead and take this last piece off with a different tool of destruction. We're actually going to use my Sawzall, but not that blade. I normally buy the Milwaukee Torch Blades, but I thought I'd give these Bowers a try. This is the Harbor Freight's higher end brand, so we're going to give this a try.
flat bottom. It's going to drag over the rocks a whole lot better. So check this out. This is the piece we cut off the bottom. Let's move it up to the light. Look at the holes in there. I don't know how it's going to come out on film, but you can see there's actually a whole bunch of holes along that bottom edge there. We definitely, uh, definitely wore through this piece. So we're going to go ahead and use this piece to uh, cut out our template for our new new bottom piece. So this was reasonably thick steel. You can see there, it's it's probably better than an eighth. It's thicker than I thought it was. But we're going to go ahead and replace this with some quarter. So we have this piece of quarter inch steel here. We have plenty of steel to be able to scribe around here, mark our lines where we're going to cut. For plasma cutting, I'm using my Antra welding helmet that I picked up off of Amazon in the grinding mode. It actually works great for the plasma. I can still see really good, but it's not hurting my eye. I need to get some bigger breakers in the shop so I can really turn this machine up. So it's a little slow cut quarter inch, but it does get the job done. Get some grinding done, get this cleaned up, and we'll get it welded in. So it's a little bit crooked of a cut. I could grind it flat, but I think I'm just gonna put a slight bend in the center of this. You can see back here where it rocks a little bit. I think if I just bend that just a little bit, I'm gonna make it work. And I don't think I'm gonna grind it a whole lot more. We're just gonna prep this housing and burn it in. you guys remember the barn pine shop press we had a video on a while back so I'll go ahead and give this quarter inch just a little bit of a tweak that's probably about all we need right there the quarter definitely takes a little force with this thing but it does make a bend you can see there it's just a slight bend we don't need a lot it should work just fine So we've got a really nice sharp edge all around most of this. So we're going to use the uh, carbide burr on the die grinder to clean that up a little bit. clean up a little bit further out around these edges to give me some weld surface but this is all pretty good and prepped.
All right, well, we have the opportunity. Let's uh, inspect up in here as best we can. Looks like I got rust in my teeth. How does that happen? But there's my spool. Let's go right up in there. What's going on up in there? Nothing. That's yeah, weird. I got a little bit of rust in my teeth. Don't understand that. What I'm talking about. There's no spool. That's my Detroit. Look like a spool from here, but it's not. It's my Detroit locker. A little rust on the teeth. Now I know in the past I've actually had my bolts loosen up on me just a little bit. They're looking nice and tight here. Let's see if I can weasel this up in there. Uh, not really. Get a real good close look at that one. But they look tight from what I can see here. That's kind of what I wanted to look at just to make sure they weren't backing out on me again. I think whoever built this axle in the first place was a moron and didn't tighten anything. Seems to be a moral of my Jeep story. That's the same thing that happened to my last motor. It fell apart because nothing inside was tightened. So from what I can see through here, it looks good. I've got, I don't know, maybe, maybe three eighths of an inch from the bottom of my ring gear to here, I can just about stick a finger in there, not even to the first knuckle. So there's not a lot of space. Again, I could shave this a little bit more and get tighter to that ring gear, but I don't mind leaving a little room for fluid to move. Uh, it's a pretty slim axle as it is, so I don't need a whole lot of space there. Okay, nothing left but to weld it in place. So I went ahead and welded a tab onto the bottom of the plate just for my ground clamp. It's not the best solution in the world. I don't have one of those cool magnet things, but I think I need to buy one. This gun is not set up well. It's just a one tight spot there, but everything else has a real nice little gap, just enough for some wire to get good penetration. I'm gonna burn it in. That is airtight. I'm getting no more smoke coming out, which actually is kind of a good sign. If I don't have smoke, that means my fluid's not going to come out. Just going to hang out here for a bit. Make sure I'm not building any heat where on the inside I, I can't imagine there being anything burning. 
because I watched the slight gap till the very end. There was no glow, but it still makes me a little nervous. So we're going to give this a bit to cool while we build this next piece. I'm also going to build a skid, as you can see this massive dent right here. I'm going to build a piece out of the same quarter inch material that comes up here, at least just to protect that most vulnerable spot. And I may even build a little more out around here. I don't know. We'll see how far we go. So I use the press brake again to bend up a chunk of steel that's going to go on this back. Kind of support that rib. It's not as thick. It's only an eighth inch, but an eighth inch on top of more eighth inch is going to give it that quarter. It's definitely going to add some strength. Uh, try to get it in the center there. Zoom way back. Make it focus. You'll get the idea once it's burned in, but it's going to add some strength to the back of this thing. Okay, so... All right, so the flash is making it a little difficult, but we're at about 12 and a half inches of clearance now. Started out about 12, so I guess we only ultimately gained about a half an inch, but we certainly gained a whole bunch of strength in the bottom by going with that quarter inch plate. I also wrapped this piece up around the back just to double that thickness. Welds are a little ugly because of some gaps because I didn't really form it around the compound radius as well as I would have liked to, but it's definitely stronger. Looks good. So we went ahead and stripped, let's start over here. So we went ahead and stripped this nine inch. We pulled the, uh, pulled the axles out by taking the four bolts off the flanges, pulled the third member out. So we're actually gonna get inside here. We're gonna weld in here too. I, it's still leaking on me and it's making me mad. So I'm just gonna do it right, pull it apart. We're actually gonna weld this seam. You can see right here, a little, little nick where we cut. So we're gonna weld this seam. We're, you can see this is two pieces of metal, this piece on top of this piece. So we're going to weld this seam a little bit. We're going to weld this entire seam across here. And we're going to weld over here a little bit. And up here where we burn through. That should stop it from leaking. We will find out. Now that I've wheeled a little bit with my new uh, rear skid in my shave kit, you can see I'm still, still dragging it on the rocks a bit, but I'm much more confident in it now with a quarter inch steel. Have, have I noticed a huge improvement? I guess I don't know if I have or not. I haven't noticed getting hung up on the rear end as much, so it must be an improvement. So we're going to go ahead and wrap this video up. I hope you guys learned some things. I know I did. It was a great project. It really didn't take a whole lot of time. I had this whole thing done in just a little over two hours. Um, I've wanted to do it for a long time. It just seems I should have done it earlier. It was really not a bad project. So thanks for hanging in there, guys. Also, I've added some links down below to my Amazon cart. For some of the tools I've used, I have my Antro welding helmet in there, which has been really great. I've used some more expensive helmets, but I'm really happy with that one for the price. I think it's 75 bucks. Uh, some other products down there, so go ahead and check out those links. Uh, you might find something there you could use. Thanks for watching, guys.